Namo Buddhaya, this is Sabina Kulecha and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learning from the Middle Discourse 7, which is the simile of the cloth. So, in this discourse, Buddha is uh, explaining the mind. So, Buddha used these similes uh, because similes and these analogies, they help, you know, understand the concept very well, right? So, in this, uh, in this discourse, Buddha used the simile of the cloth, right? Uh, uh, through, to explain the mind, right? So what, what Buddha said? Buddha said, Suppose mendicants, there was a cloth that was dirty and soiled. No matter what dye the dyer applied, whether blue or yellow or red or magenta, it would look poorly dyed and impure in the color. Why is that? Because of the impurity of the cloth, right? In the same way, when the mind is corrupt, a bad destiny is to be expected. What is bad destiny? Bad destiny is moving towards the lower realms, right? So our conduct, mind corrupt, results in poor conduct, which results in the uh, realm where we, we are born. This is straight. So Buddha in one of the other discourses said that there is no prayer, no worship that will come in the way of this, right? No God will come in between that, right? You Whatever you bow, you will have to reap. So Buddha says, in the same way, when the mind is corrupt, a bad destiny is to be expected. Suppose there was a cloth that was pure and clean. No matter what dye the dyer applied, whether blue or yellow or red or magenta, it would look well dyed and pure in color. Why is that? Because of the purity of the cloth. In the same way, when the mind isn't corrupt, a good destiny is to be expected. Right? So, through the simile of the cloth, Buddha is trying to explain is that whatever you do to that particular cloth, if the cloth is impure and dirty and soiled, no matter how much dye you apply, it will look impure. But if the cloth is pure, the dye would come out very well, right? So the important thing is that our mind, <coughs> it's very important to purify our mind, right? So then Buddha explains what are the corruptions of the mind, right? Various corruptions of the mind. See, Buddha was a mind scientist, right? The kind of detailing that he has done, on the workings of the mind is like impact. Impeccable is not the word. I mean, there is no word for it. But Buddha is now talking about this. There are 16 corruptions that Buddha talked about the mind. What is that? Covetousness and immoral greed, ill will, anger, hostility, disdain, contempt, jealousy, stinginess. Stinginess means miserliness. Deceit, deviousness, obstinacy, aggression, conceit, Arrogance, vanity, negligence are the corruptions of the mind. So Buddha said, see, this is also I am giving you. 16 corruptions of the mind, right? Now, what Buddha said, <coughs> sorry, Buddha said, a mendicant who understands the corruptions of the mind and gives them up, has the experiential confidence in Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, and who's, one who spreads the love in all the directions, they become free. Right? So what we have to do is that give up all the corruptions of the mind right? through our practice. Right? So it will not happen overnight. So if you have anger issues, they will not go overnight. We have to follow the path, the path that Buddha has taught. What is the path that Buddha has taught? The Noble Eightfold Path. If you cannot recount the Noble Eightfold Path right now in on your hands, then think, you know, this is the core, the most core teaching. It should be like readily on your, uh, on your fingertips. Right? So, get down to it, study the Noble Eightfold Path and follow the path. Right? So, one is that a person who understands the corruptions of the mind and gives them up has the experiential confidence. What is experiential confidence is through experience. It's not a, like a theoretical confidence that someone has told <coughs> that Buddha is the awakened one and I rely on. No, it's my own experience of, of knowing the Buddha as, as a reliable as a as a fully realized one right now buddha is not in front of me but somewhere through his teachings and you know following his teachings or following the path i gather that that confidence that no what this person is saying he he is fully realized right so experiential confidence in buddha dhamma dhamma are the teachings and the sangha right the sangha the spiritual community so that experiential confidence and then Spreading the love in all directions, right? This is also coming in other discourses. Spreading love, right? So first, be more and more mindful, 
right? Then you can spread compassion, right? It actually naturally spreads from you. If you like become a no mobile tower, you know, like a mobile tower spreads the signals, you, you can spread love in all directions, right? So that's why I, in one of the shots that I said, mindfulness is like applying brakes, right? So from a mind which is habituated to anger, blame, resentment, practice of mindfulness ensures that we, you know, some brakes are applied to those tendencies. And once sufficiently the depth has been achieved, then the natural good qualities like compassion, they will arise. And then we can spread compassion in all four directions. So if you are at this point where you can naturally, you are naturally spreading compassion in all four directions, you are at a very, very good level, right? So keep practicing. So Buddha says, a mendicant who understands the corruption of the mind and gives them up has experiential confidence in Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha and spreads the love in all the directions, they become free, right? Now, there was this question in one of the, in, in this discourse uh, that many people deem that the river Bahuka, so one of the rivers the person mentioned, there was query to the Buddha. Many people deem that the river Bahuka leads to a heavenly world and bestows merit. Yeah. Many people deem that the river Bahuka leads to a heavenly world and bestows merit. And many people wash off their bad deeds in river Bahuka. The Buddha addressed Sundarabhika Bhardwaja in verse. Buddha says that Bahukas and the Adhika at Gaya and the Sundarika too, Saraswati and Payag, Payag and another river Bahumati, a fool can constantly plunge into them, but it won't purify their dark deeds. Right? The Buddha was categorically, you know, on this thing that no amount of bathing in these holy rivers can can purify your dark deeds. What can Sundrika do? What can Payag or Bahuka do? What can the river do? They can't cleanse a cruel and criminal person from their bad deeds. For the pure in heart, it's always the spring festival or the Sabbath. For the pure in heart and clean of deed, their vows will always be fulfilled. It's here alone that you bath Brahmin, making yourself a sanctuary for all creatures. So Buddha says, here alone, you don't need to go anywhere. Just start doing the right karmas today. Right? Buddha says, if you speak no lies, no, don't harm any living creature, not steal anything not given, and you are faithful and not stingy, what's the point of going to Gaya? For any well may be, any well may be your Gaya. Any well means any pond, any lake can be your Gaya. So beautiful, right? What we have to work on our actions, our karmas, right? It's not that you have to go somewhere and make a holy dip. Even if you make a holy dip, it will not free you if you have done dark deeds, right? So refrain, give up the dark deeds. Start cultivating the good, start spreading compassion in all directions. And then any well, any pond, any water, it will be your Gaya, it will be your Ganges, it will be any holy river, right? So this was the, the simile of the cloth, middle discourses 7. I hope this video was useful to you. Do read the discourse at your end also and uh, do share your thoughts, reflections, uh, uh, on, on this particular discourse in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya.